I've always had this with, with football. Am I good enough? If this doesn't work out, what am I going to do? And then we have a guest here. Lucas. Lucas <laughs> is now part of the Without a Doubt team. You play NAIA? NAIA, yes, for a school called Westcliff here in Irvine. What do you think about the level in NAIA? It goes up and down Paris. a lot. The lowest of the low is such a difference to the highest of the high. You have all these European kids coming in that played football the whole life. In a NAIA, you might have players that have played other sports like basketball or baseball the whole life and then switch to soccer for the last three years. Do you know the difference between NCAA and NAIA? In most players from Europe, they, they go through these agencies. For instance, they were telling me that NAIA was on the kind of same level as D2. For me, it was football, coming out here, playing and, and using that to get an education. Throughout this entire story, your, your entire journey, where does modeling <laughs> where does modeling come in? I got a message on Instagram regarding a brand that wanted me to do a shoot for them. I started doing runways in Norway and I started the outdoor thing as well, something that was really, really fun. As long as I could enjoy my football, because that's something that is the most important thing to me is to be enjoying on the field, because if not, you don't play your best level. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Um, my name is Rafael Espinosa. I'm here with Carlos. Miguel Espinosa. Um, and then we have a guest here, Lucas. Lucas. You want to give a little bit of a quick little intro? Yes. So my name is Lucas Rousseau. I'm from Spain and Norway, so I'm half half. And I was born in Barcelona and I moved to Norway when I was 10 years old. And then I'm out here now for four years. Playing my college career and pretty much almost done. You play NAIA? NAIA, yes, for a school called Westcliff here in Irvine. And been here all four years. We have the boy on the team. Yeah, so <laughs> Lucas is now part of the Without a Doubt team. Uh, eighth member of the team? Is that right? Fact check me. Eighth, right? Eight. Yeah, eight. Oh, wait, we got five here? No, six. Here. Six. Six. Sergio Victor. Eight. Eighth Love member you. of the of the Love team. You. Thank you guys. Um so we'll get we'll get your story out there. But um yeah, I think uh, you're a perfect addition to the team. And just a quick summary of Lucas. He yeah, like you said you're out here playing. Um played four years. Four years? Yes. Three years. Uh, NAIA. NAIA Westcliff. with Westcliff. Mm -hmm. So he's NAIA and I think it's it's pretty cool because on this team we have um Sunday League. Did you play Sunday League? Yes or no? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So um, no, we got D two. We got D no, we got D three with Victor playing D three. Mm. We have D two uh two our uh Miguel and Sergio have played two two D one yeah. uh Matias and I. Yeah. And then now we have NAIA. So we hit Everything, everything in college. Uh, Sergio played Juco, Juco as yeah. well. Mm. We had every every point in college now. That's um, it's perfect. Yeah. So, um, cool. Let's get into your story, bro. Yeah. Uh, so, born and raised in Spain. Yep. Um, Barcelona, Spain. Yes. When did your soccer journey begin? So it started pretty early, like in Europe. I think you guys have pretty much the same thing as well. Like we we start off very young. We, how you say, like they say, you get born with the ball in your feet. You know, you right. you always out there playing football. If it's pickup, if it's in on the streets, if it's uh, whatever, wherever you are, you bring your ball always with you. So I think since since I went to school, I remember in Spain when I was younger, um, I was very young at that age. But they had different teams within the school, so you used to play a little bit like here. Actually, you used to play against other schools. But then as, as little kids, of course. Um, so that's already where it started. And then I moved to Norway when I was around 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And that's when it really started because my dad became my coach for a team that he put me in. Um, and I was very lucky because uh, it was the guys that I went to school with and stuff like that. And me moving from, from Spain and not really speaking a lot of Norwegian and stuff like this, it was a bit difficult to adapt to everything. Um, but having... Sorry, quickly. Who, who's Norwegian? Your mom? So or yeah, my, my mother is Spanish and my oh. dad is Norwegian. Mm -hmm. So we moved, especially due to the economical crisis that happened in in Europe. That was like a big thing. Mm -hmm. And my dad got a job back in in Norway, so we went there, and it was a big step for all of us. Um, but yeah, no, um, moving into that team, that's where it all kind of started. And I had my dad as a coach, that is also a big thing because my dad was also 
very strict, very direct, very strong character at that time mm. and still is. But um, yeah, I think that also had a big influence on, on my football career in that kind of sense. Um, so yeah, started over there and then uh, I think I had them for three, four years and we played with a very good team at that time. We were very young, of course, so um, I think it was uh, nine aside. Mm -hmm. At that time, I don't know what age you guys start with 11 aside. Do you know, like 12, 13? 12, yeah, 13. I think 12. Yeah, <clears throat> so it was yeah around the same time. Um, and then I had one, two years there uh, playing 11 aside where my dad stepped down as a coach and, and another coach came in. And then I moved to another team because uh, I also moved place. I was living in Oslo, the capital, and I moved the uh, house. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I think the best for my parents as well was to move teams as well so they didn't have to drive me or make me go different places all the time. So so I moved team and I had a lot of luck there as well because I ended up going for a local team there that the club in itself wasn't supposed to be a very good like club. Mm -hmm. um, it was more like actually a ski club, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, a ski club? A ski club. Oh. So like uh, they do um, a lot of ski now because there's a lot of snow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it was a combined, like it was ski and football. It was more athletic uh, mm. stuff in there, you know. But exactly that age group was one of the best ones in, in the city. Um, and it's just the coach that had his son that is now playing for the national team and stuff like this. Um, but he, he had his son and he was kind of taking all the, the good players from different teams and getting them in there, you know. Mm. So because of one of my guys from the old team went there and they got to see some of our games and stuff. And, and then we ended up three, four players from that team moving over to this team. Um, and that's where I think it really started getting serious for me. Uh, so at that point, you're what, 13, 14? Yeah, 13, 14 at that time. I've been playing football my whole life, but that's where you kind of, the level was was getting to a point where, you know, you, you could see that um we were playing good football and, and it excited a lot of us and, and yeah, we, we had high expectations. So the level was really high. So we were going to tournaments and stuff like that all around all around Norway. That's where, for instance, now most people know Holland, for instance. Mm. And that's with that team. That's where I played against Holland uh, when we were 14 uh, or something like that. played against Holland too? Yeah, I played against Holland. I, I didn't play a single minute, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting on the Please. bench. But my whole team played against him. And I just remember it so well because I was so shocked because we were watching him just destroy us. Uh. And I think he scored four goals and wow. they won 4-1. Mm. So that was back in the days when he was playing for his local club. Um, and yeah, and from there, I went uh, four Wait, years there. Yeah. Really quickly. So I know you said dad and you're trying to take it more serious, but like yeah. when just growing up, um, what was the thought process with, with soccer? Like, was it yeah. like, was it to play professionally or was it just playing because that's just the passion just the, yeah the nature of it growing up there yeah. or like what what was the mindset i think um early on it was when we were kids it was just to play of course um i had some parents that were very like open with for me to choose what i wanted to do with my life and stuff so i was very lucky in that sense but so i got that freedom to choose uh but i think at the age of from 10 to 8 to the 17, 18, around that time, it was, yeah, I was really looking into what I could do with football mm -hmm. and kind of see where I could reach with this stuff. Um, but at that time as well, being in Norway, uh, something that Matthias probably can confirm as well is you have a lot of different, because uh, you're going to school and stuff like that. So a lot of people are very influenced about what's happening around them at that time. So to be very strictly focused on football was for me very difficult. Um, just because I was also a very social guy, always running around and, and being friends with this guy, this guy, and trying to experience things. So um, I think it was a bit of a combination, but it was in a period of, especially from 14 to 17, I was very into, okay, let me see if I can do something with this. Yeah. Um, and then I reached a point in my life where I reached 18, um, and uh, I was playing for, I switched teams again. So mm -hmm. whenever, th this was junior team until you're, I think it's 
17 or 18 and then you sw switch up again to th and then you're a certain age where you can't play the junior teams anymore you, you need to go for the senior teams mm. and that's why i changed team to to um a team close to where i lived and that was a very good team that was playing at that time third division um so i played there for a little while for two years and that's where i really was trying to push for it um but i reached 18 and and kind of you know, high school, and I was done with high school and all this stuff, and, and life really hits you, you know, because you're like, okay, what, what am I going to do? Um, right now, I'm not in a position with football where I'm in an academy or where I'm in a club where I know this possibilities of going higher up, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a year of, like, kind of trying to figure that out. And I'm not going to lie, it was pretty dif difficult for me because I always has tho had those other interests as well to kind of, you know career-wise with, with work or, or what I wanted to do with my life or where I wanted to live and stuff like that. I was always thinking a lot. So at that time I went through, I, I had one year of a gap year. So mm -hmm. when I was done with high school, I was like, okay, let me take a gap year, let me work, let me play, and let me see where that takes me. And then after that, I decide if I'm going to study or not study. And that's when, that year, that's when I, I heard about the US. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, in in... In Europe, we don't really, like, we know that people are playing here in the U.S. and stuff like that, but we don't really know how it works, especially the system. Mm. So I got very shocked when I came out here because I was like, okay, there's a big system and it's, it's, there's a lot of possibilities. But at that time, I wasn't thinking too much about it, but then I saw the possibility of going to the U.S. and use football to give me an education as well, soccer. Well, Who introduced you to that idea of going to the US? Yeah, so I had a, I had a couple of teammates of mine that were older that went to the US um, and they were talking a lot about it. And then I had a friend of mine that didn't take this gap year. He went straight to the US. Oh. Um, and he's a really good friend of mine that uh, now is done and is back in Norway. Mm. But he kind of had the year there. So I, I got a lot of insight from that. Um, so then, yeah, exactly that year, I went back home to Spain for the summer and stuff like that, and I had a full year, so I ended up um, being with a girl that I kind of went a bit too crazy for, and I moved to and I moved to Amsterdam, actually. So oh, wow. I ended up going to Amsterdam uh, to be with her and, and play over there as well. I was playing because his dad was a lot into football as well, uh, so he was a lot like... Um, he was working together with Johan Cruyff and stuff like this about his foundation. He was actually not here anymore at that time, but um, they had a foundation that's called the Johan Cruyff Foundation. So he had a lot of contacts. So in that side, I was very lucky to be able to play with some players that was ex-pros in the Eredivisie. I don't know if you know the league, but mm -hmm. the Netherlands league that, you know, it's it's a high level. So these ex-pros, of course, they were not playing to, to do anything with it because they were already done. Mm -hmm. but, it was a good way for me to keep myself in shape and, and get touches in. And, and, you know, they have a lot of qualities, even though they're older at that time, you know. So I got to do that. But then over there kind of started, you know, losing a little bit track of where I was going with football. And, and I started losing a little bit of control of that. So I don't know, one day just really clicked for me. And um, I had a already set up... Um, I signed with a school in, in San Francisco mm. um, and then COVID hit. So they closed the full, uh, yes. how you say, the athletic department. Was this also an NAIA school or was it? This was a D2 school. A D2? Yeah. So I, I think it was called no Notre Dame, but it's two Notre Dame schools right. or, or more probably. Yeah. But, but it was one of those. Um, so then... Yeah, I had that going on and then COVID hit, so I was so unsure what I was going to do. So then I ended up calling the coach and saying that I wasn't going to go because um, my head was was not in place. But of course, for the last two, three years, my my kind of dream was to go to the U.S. because I've heard about it now and I was building up like this dream of, you know, getting something new and, and, and using football for my education. So so I, I don't know why I, I ended up saying that I wasn't going. And then... Um, it just clicked for me and at one point i think it was two months later i called back and i said i i don't know why i told you that i didn't want to go it's been a dream of mine for past years and stuff like this and i would really love if you gave me a second chance but then that's when he broke to me that 
the whole school had shut down mm. and that there was no opportunities, but that he respected a lot that I came and was honest with him. So he said that he was going to try and help me. And that's how I got in contact with Westcliff in it. Cause, um, I think the coach, they knew our coach back then at Westcliff and that's where they contacted me and uh, another friend of mine that was also going to that school mm. and they signed both of us. So then we ended up going there. What do you already know about the college system? Is it like, you don't know anything about it yeah. or are you just like, do you know the difference between NCAA and NAIA? Like, yeah. Do you so I, I, yeah, I, I knew, I knew a couple of things at that point. Cause I've heard from my friend and as well, uh, from at least the place coming from Norway and most places from Europe, they, they go through these agencies. So they have meetings with you and they explain to you a little bit, even though you kind of don't, you need to come to actually realize, I feel, mm -hmm. you know, cause they can explain as much as they want. So I knew the different levels, but for instance, they were telling me that NAIA was on the kind of same level as D2 mm -hmm. out here. And then coming out here, I don't know if, if that's the case. Uh, I, I don't have enough information on that, but of course for me, I was just thinking, okay, it might be the same level, but I don't know the level. I don't know right. what to expect, you know, and especially knowing that the U.S., soccer at least back in the days wasn't like the main sport now it's growing like crazy and it's it's lovely to see but um yeah i didn't i didn't know too much so i knew the different names of the leagues and stuff like that but i didn't know what how it worked then i just remembered people who used to tell me that it was conferences it was this tournament stuff but i didn't really know so coming out it was for me more just i need a big change in my life and moving to the other side of the, of the world I don't think there's a bigger change than that so mm. I was just super lucky because then when I heard about Westcliff as well I heard you know it's in California it's 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 warm weather it's you know football in the warm weather with the grass fields that they were showing me and all this kind of stuff I was like okay this looks amazing and for us in Norway as well living with nine months of, of snow every day is or nine months is a bit too much but it's <laughs> a lot a lot of snow and very cold always so mm. I was always dreaming to get out and I don't know if it's because I have the Spanish side of mine that is always searching for that warm weather and stuff, but I ended up then just coming out here without knowing actually too much. And uh, yeah. So when you were thinking about going to the U.S., like, was there a, like, you, were you trying to get familiar with states at all either? Or like, you just like, go to the U.S. and like, yeah, like no. what if you ended up in like... That's, that's Ohio, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know I mean? True. Um, that's it. Uh, Sorry for... i <laughs> from Ohio, but... <laughs> No, I had, I had actually a couple of offers from different places, like one in Nebraska and stuff like this. And it's, I think it was Nebraska, some cold ass place. Did you have like a highlight tape? For so yeah, there? no, we, yeah, we created a highlight tape. Um, this, that's what they do. The agents, they help you out with a lot. Um, they do a highlight tape. They show you to the coaches and all this stuff. And then you get your offers. Um, so I had a couple of offers from different states I didn't even know about, to be mm. completely honest. And now I still live here for four years and there's still states that I probably don't know about. Yeah. So um, the ones that I knew was, of course, California it was uh, more cities as well, like knowing about New York, Miami, uh, mm -hmm. you know, different places, San Francisco, L.A. So it was it was more that I was searching for at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, there wasn't too many places in my head rather than California, uh, Miami or New York. That was that was the three things that I always told my agent. That's where I want to go. Right. Um, and then I was so lucky that I got San Francisco at first, and then after that, even more lucky that I get something here in California again. So that's also what gave me the extra push to also come here because we were going through COVID, and mm -hmm. COVID, you know, for me, I always say this: like I feel like it put all the people in the world in the same kind of level. Right. Yeah, it just got everybody together and, and kind of you, you were whatever you were doing with your life, your career, you were on the same level as as your neighbor. You know what I mean? So, right. so it was a difficult time, and a difficult choice, but I think in the end it ended up being the best thing for so me. So you came here what year? Twenty twenty? No. Twenty twenty, yeah. Oh yeah. Twenty twenty. So it was full COVID. But it was amazing for me because out here it was a lot uh, less stricter. Uh -huh. So back home you couldn't leave the house, you couldn't do anything. At least there you could do stuff you could go to the beach even and stuff like this so mm. it wasn't it wasn't too bad i think it was the best thing that could have happened to me during COVID because being all locked in and and like it was in europe 
it's not a good thing because you see yeah. the side effects of that. So oh, I'm assuming mm -hmm. when you made your decision to come here, you also ended the relationship with the girl. Yeah, the yeah, no, for sure. So that was it. wasn't It was a very toxic relationship and things that we all go through in the mm -hmm. end of the day. Yeah. So I think it's important to go through those things. And for me, I'm looking back. I'm just very happy that I was so lucky to to get that second chance in the end of the day. Because when I called, I was so unsure of what he was going to say. And if he didn't help me out, I probably wouldn't have been here today. So um, it was a good thing. Um, and I think it was good for both of us in the end of the day. Yeah. So I ended everything and I came out here and I kind of, um, with COVID and all this stuff, it was so weird because you came out here and you kind of got to experience California, but everything in the end of the day wasn't completely open. The mm -hmm. people weren't outside. It wasn't, it was a little bit of a zombie, zombie moment, you know? So mm -hmm. it was, it was uh, definitely a special experience for sure. First, what did you study in what I was with? Yes, I studied business administration, okay. the most simple, uh, common thing to study. And that was also cause I had no idea what I was going to do. So for me, it was football coming out here, playing and, and using that to get an education, especially because I have family and parents that they, they've been very nice with me and open, but very strict and very, I wouldn't say pushy, but they want the best for me. And mm -hmm. uh, in Norway, we're so lucky. We have a educational system where they help us to get out. They, they can help us with student loans and stuff like this. They're very, very good loans that, that makes us be able to have experiences like this. So they were always pushing for for that experience and, and to not for me to get a certain degree, but just to have a degree. Um, yeah. And I think the combination using football with that, it was perfect for me. So when, but did your mindset switch when you got here? Like, did you definitely, are uh, you no longer thinking like pro or are you now thinking like, I just want to get an education and play? Yeah. So to be honest, at that time, when I came out here, I was so gone in my head because all these COVID things were happening and I had all these other things with, with Amsterdam and all this stuff and I wasn't really me anymore. So mm -hmm. so at that time, I kind of lost, as I told you guys, I lost a little bit track of where I wanted to go with football. And then when I came out here, um, I wasn't expecting too much because I thought, okay, you know, I didn't know about the system. I didn't know about the tons of opportunities you have out here to, to go through the college system or, or to go through different academies and stuff like this. So coming out, yeah, I got very shocked and, and I saw how the system worked and stuff like that. And I got a lot of motivation from that. Um, and especially with, with Westcliff as well, uh, one amazing thing has been that we have so many nationalities there. Mm. So you had, I came there and I got to, to experience to play with players. I've been in big academies in Europe, uh, play for big teams in Europe, uh, just, just good level players that maybe, you know, in Norway, you also have a lot of those, but to combine all these different coaches, um, also different mindsets. And, and a lot of people when I came out here, they have already been here for a while. So they were like, okay, you know, like I'm trying to go pro with this. I'm trying to do this with football, I'm trying to go to, I don't know, trying to go D1 after this and stuff like that. And I started getting more and more motivation. And I guess just maybe that year in Amsterdam and, and COVID and stuff made me lose that motivation a little bit. And I regained it by, by meeting these people and, and being around this system. And then being COVID as well, you had nothing to do, right? So it yeah. was always on the field, always touching the ball or, or, I don't know, working out or whatever it was. So the routines became crazy. So those were routines that me, maybe my friends back home and stuff like that, I had a lot of players playing football, but then they also switched over to, you know, going to study and stuff like that, kind of put football a little bit to the side. And that affected me as well because I wasn't strong enough to stand for what I wanted to do maybe. Mm. So so that I, I, I would say affected me a lot. Um, but then I came out here and as I said, all these people and, and having that motivation made me want to see what I could do with it mm. um, and see if I could, as, as long as I could enjoy my football, because that's something that is the most important thing to me is to be enjoying on the field and be enjoying with it. Because if not, you don't play your best level. Yeah. yeah. So uh, where's your mindset now? So now, now after four years, I, I was very motivated those four years. And and now for sure, I, I always I always look to, I'm never going to stop playing. So mm. that's something that for me is is, is something I want to keep doing now. Of course, looking into to my masters now, get another season. If I, if I get that in, then you never know what can come. So I, I always love to play football 
I, my lifestyle is around football. I, I I'm touching the ball every single day almost, and and going to the gym and doing all these kind of things. So, so we'll see what comes with it. Um, but it definitely is never to stop playing. So, mm. so it really depends. I think for me personally, it really depends on that master situation. Because if I get one more season at Westcliff, I have the opportunity to to show showcase myself again. Mm. And depending on what numbers I can I can do from that, then also we can look into what I can do for my next step. Mm. So it depends a lot on that. And if not, then we'll see, because then my visa might be ending and stuff like that. So then coming back home to Spain is a big motivation for me as well to play there, because I never got to experience the, the more ad- adult side of it, you know, because mm. I was only living there when I was younger. So to be able to play there as well is something that I really want to do. Um, and there, of course, um, I wouldn't say it's more difficult, but but it's it's of course it's a system that is very different. Yeah. So coming in at that age as well, it might not be as easy to to do a pro team and stuff like that because they look a lot at the age and they do that of course here as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But here's it's so up and coming, so the opportunities you you get new opportunities all the time. I think. And that's what's amazing with this place and something that I would highly recommend to a lot of players back in back in Europe and, and wherever they are in the world. What do you think about the level in, in AIA? I think the level is, is, is it, it, how you say, it goes up and down varies. a lot. Yeah, it varies a bit, in my opinion, too much because um, the lowest of the low is, is such a difference to the highest of the high, you know? So mm. it's very, for example, with my team, um, you have all these European kids coming in that played football their whole life. And yeah. in, a- in AIA, you might have other American kids that have done the same, but you will have also players that have played other sports like basketball mm-hmm. or baseball their whole life and then switched to, to soccer for the last, I don't know, three years. Mm-hmm. Um, and naturally then the level is not going to be the same, right? So so it's a bit, uh, I was a bit confused in the start because we had so many great players in, in our team because they were able to to sign so many Europeans. But then um, you saw the players at the teams that we were playing, and then you suddenly see like 15-0 or even 6-7-8-0. And those games, like when you have a conference and you have, what, 12 games, and six of them you're winning games like this, it's not really enjoyable like that you know right. um but you gotta you gotta just focus and in the end of the day enjoy the moment so so we the level goes a lot up and down so i would say i don't know it, it, it would be nice to have it more yeah even in yeah. that sense you know so i don't know if it's because as well the rules are a bit different from naia and ca because uh, you can have a, I think you can only have a certain amount of internationals, right? Yeah, you know exactly. that probably. Well. Um and in NIA you can have as many as you want. It seems. Yeah. So, so I think your team is made up of all, all of your we have all internationals. Germans, we have Norwegians, Spanish people, French people, we have all types of people, and Japanese. Uh, Nigerian is is everywhere. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, though. That's that's sick. Cool. Cool. So it's a super experience. I think uh, we gained the, all of us, we gained a lot from that. We grew a lot from it because, mm. you know, when coming out here and having that COVID year and, you know, it's, you leave your families and all that kind of stuff to a whole different world that you haven't seen in your life, you know, and then being able to adapt with all these these players has been, it's been a great journey and I think something that makes you grow so much. I know now you're doing like uh, training, like you're doing like private training and yeah. stuff. But are, are you coaching like teams? No, not now. No, I was I was at a certain point. Uh, but yeah, not now. So what like is coaching something that interests you? Like so, like- coaching is something that I love. Yes, <laughs> um, and especially coming out is seeing that brings back the motivation with with not only me and my career as a football player, but also seeing how people are developing out here and and how the soccer is developing is is exciting as a as a as a guy that loves that sport, you know, because it's been my life always and it's always going to be there. So so seeing that is something that you kind of want to be a part of. And then you get into coaching and, and then you start seeing these these kids develop and, and you see that you can make an impact on them. And that's something that I've always excited me because 
I want to be a part of that, I feel. Mm -hmm. So I started coaching here straight away also because as a European, you cannot work here because uh, you're on a student visa. Mm -hmm. So that was a nice way for me to to get at least some work in and, and be able to to apply my thoughts in football, you know? Um, right. So no, I love it and I, I love to, especially when you see the progress and you see that you, you're actually doing something it's a great thing. So it's something that excites me a lot and something that, you know, depending on where my career goes and stuff like this, is something I definitely want to tap into and continue doing that. So so that would be a, a big a big part of my life moving forward as well. Throughout this entire story, your, your entire journey, where does modeling, <laughs> where does modeling come in? Yeah, no, this is, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. And that actually has a lot of impact on on football as well and my career because and my thoughts of what I wanted to do with it because at, at 15 when well, let, let me just give people like a little bit of yeah, like yeah. insight he's an Aldo model and I don't know if you if you mind but Yuli if you can just like <laughs> put a picture of, of Lucas up only for Aldo yeah but, no yeah I've been yeah. lucky I've been lucky it's been a great experience with that I was in Canada doing <laughs> stuff for Aldo yet um and uh but when did you get started How yeah I, st I started when i was 15 um at 15 when actually football also started getting very serious for me that's when uh, i got a message on a dm on instagram regarding a brand that wanted me to to uh do a shoot for them mm. and i'm not gonna lie at that point i was 50 i was so young i thought they were gonna kidnap me or something <laughs> I, I thought what is this you know so i couldn't really believe it. i showed my parents it's like this this is a big scam um, and then they ended up actually calling my parents to to talk to them and make them understand it was legit and stuff. And I ended up, I don't know how, uh, going there. And then with a friend of mine. And they, I came there and it was funny because, you know, they had the, everything set up. It was a studio and everything. And I and I had no idea what modeling was. I had no idea what to do. So I came, they put me on the X that they put in front of it. And I turned around and the cameras was on me and I started doing this. <laughs> I started doing like poses and stuff like this. And they just started laughing, laughing. And then they explained to me that I had to be serious and all these kind of things. And, and not like, it, it wasn't like a friendly shoot, you know, it was a little bit more professional. So, so then we got into it and then they asked me if I had an agency. And I said, I had no idea what an agency was. They connected me with the agency. Did they say how they found you? Or they just they, like, they just found me through Instagram, apparently. But did you have like, you had like... And that's the thing, I didn't have any. At that point, I was posting, of course, like Mike stuff, but I wasn't doing anything modeling. I wasn't doing anything of that. So that's why I was really weirded out because I had no idea about this modeling world. And it's low key, low key. Yeah, <laughs> low key, right? That's why I was, I was creeped out, but... <clears throat> but then I did that and they linked me up with the agency and, and I got this agency back home in Norway. Um, and from there, it just kind of blew after that because I, I started doing runways in Norway and I started... Runways? Yeah, runways. And because and, apparently, I don't know why I walk good, they say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that <laughs> That's means. Crazy. But they say, yeah, you have a really natural talent in, in walking. I say, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't everybody walk? You yeah, know? That's crazy. Uh, I don't know. So then I started... I must start like really <laughs> analyzing your walk now. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but then I started, yeah, doing those runways and shoots. And then suddenly I was tapping into a lot of the big brands in Norway and stuff like this. And I went to Barcelona, I got agency there and then agency in Germany. So it started developing to something serious. And they, at one point, uh, that happened, I think, before Amsterdam, they wanted me to go to China for a whole year. Whoa. I was like, that's crazy. I was young. I was like, okay, I heard a lot of bad things about it as well, that they, they don't treat you really well, that you go working 15 hours, you don't drink a sip of water, you know, like it's some crazy stuff. So, and then I decided to not go. But at that point I was like, okay, damn, like, it seems like I can do something with this as well. Mm -hmm. So then I had football, I have this and I have study. I was like, okay, I don't but know what to do. What what are you what are you modeling for? Like, is it just shirts? So it's, or? No, so you have an agency as a model. So it's an agency that you have agents that they kind of reach out or the brands reach out to the agencies usually. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let's say Nike wants to do a commercial. So they reach out to this agency that they know and they say, okay, we need this and this specific features on this guy. 
can you send me what you have? And then they send different options and then they kind of pick. Do you know what your features are? No idea. Like Still. You don't know what they have on there. Yeah, no, my, I, the thing is I haven't because of living out here, I couldn't model anything cause, mm. cause of the student visa. So I grew my hair. So I, you, you guys have seen me without the hair and, and shade that side. So that was kind of my image. My whole image was having this shaved head with, with just being dead serious and old pictures and <laughs> just being a, a now you can say this urban urban boy you know mm. uh but now i've grew it out i don't know what's gonna happen now with them they they're trying this new style so we're gonna see what happens but but that was my 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 thing yeah. um so yeah no i had all these opportunities now after doing all of that and it kind of blew a little bit i had to make a choice they said to me because they wanted me to kind of you know, either you go for this or not, because we need your time, because you need to be traveling, you need to be going there, 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 if you want to do this. And they told me, we can't tell you right now if you're actually going to succeed with it. But in my head, I was like, that would be so stupid to go fully in for this right now. Because I was saying, like, when I reach 30, 40, um, well, if, if everything goes really, really well, something that is a high probability that probably wouldn't, because the chance of really becoming... A model and, and work with that and kind of make a living out of that it's not easy because mm. there's so many people that want to do it so i kind of wasn't sure and then i said it's, it'd be stupid of me to do that so then that's why i ended up deciding to say no to go to china and i decided to come here mm. however i thought in my mind that i could be able to, I, I didn't do my research correctly and i thought i would be able to work out here something that i didn't so then mm. i was really lucky though to to be able to go to canada and stuff like that because they don't have the same rules there so i've gone to canada and i've done some work out there and that's when i i did the outdoor thing as well something that was really really fun so we'll see where it goes from here as well because that's kind of a little bit on the on the we we're kind of waiting for me so, to finish study especially mm. so that's still like something you're doing as yeah well. that's still alive for sure so i'll have you modeling for uh <laughs> without a doubt without a doubt for sure. <laughs> without a doubt whenever you guys need give us like uh an idea of what a runway setting up for a runway mm. doing the runway what does that look like it's crazy to me because for me this this world is a bit it's it's very weird world you know it's a bit <laughs> of a of a sticky one i would say because you meet a lot of amazing people but you, when you come to a runway you know like you have all these models and you can only imagine the personalities of these people, you know, you, you're there for, for, I don't know, either your looks or your features or whatever, and you think you're the, the, you're the boy, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And for me, I was never there, because for me, everything of this, and still to this day, is so surreal for me, because I, I don't understand how a person can make money out of their looks or out of their, how they walk, or out of the, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't sit right with <clears> me. <throat> so I never understood that, and I never let that get to my head in that kind of sense. Um, and then, you know, you go then and you set up the runway and you have to be there the whole day. Uh, you have the runway at 6 p.m. You got to arrive at 9 a.m. And everybody's there, all the models, hairdressers, uh, every, everything they do for you. You know, you got to sit then and they choose your outfit firstly. So you go for a runway. Usually what you do is two days before you have this fitting, they call it. So you go, mm. you fit, you try your clothes, they fit it. And then you go one more time the day before to see if they've done the fits correctly. And then you come the next day. And the next day, let's say you have it, uh, the runway at 6 p.m., you arrive at 9 a.m. And most likely you, 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 you will sit there for six hours straight, not doing anything, just conversating with people, uh, connecting. That's why a lot of these people love doing is, is getting in contact with people and because and, a lot of it is word of mouth. So mm -hmm. a lot of it is in contact, and that comes from football as well. You know, at the end of the day, a lot is contact and opinion-based games. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you you kind of waste your whole day. I'm not gonna lie. And I hated it. I hated going there and be like six hours waiting, and then they might do something with your hair, fit you up, and stuff like that, and then ready to go. But then you have also this this side of you know you meet a lot of amazing people, very creative people, and something that I think a lot of but well, most people should have in their life some creative people that really push that side of you because it can bring a lot of good sides. Um, so it was a great experience, but then you also have the, the dark side of it. That is all these drugs and all these mm -hmm. kind of stuff because they deal with a lot of pressure, these people, because they mm -hmm. put pressure on themselves. I have to look like this, I have to look like that. Oh no, I don't look good today. And, and you 
start getting these crazy insecurities, you know? Um, so I would always go to the bathroom and suddenly it's like, you know, these people doing drugs right before the runway. So I'm like, I'm 16 seeing these things, 24 year olds doing whatever drug they're doing to make themselves confident to go out there. Mm. So in my mind, I was stressing because I was like, okay, how heavy is this? You know, these guys are taking <laughs> drugs to be confident and I need to go out there and, and act confident. And then, um, yeah, you arrive there, you do all these, these fittings and stuff. And then you literally walk for three minutes and it's done. So you're there for nine hours, wow. three minutes, applause, okay. all this kind of stuff. You go off the stage, you change, you say bye and that's it. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's not a really fun, in my opinion, fun thing. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, it's super interesting because I really love the, the part of the, the social part. Mm. And for everybody that knows me, you guys know I love socializing with people and I love, you know, having conversations. So, so going there and being able to, to get to know so many different, and different mindsets. And it's crazy because they're very, most people that do Mali, they're special people. They have their own ways of doing stuff in both negative and positive ways. You know, so for me to see all of this, I'm somebody that really like likes, you know, seeing different kinds of people and, 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 and mindsets. So seeing all of this, I think also make me, made me grow a lot. And, and I'm grateful for, for being able to, to do that. I was going to ask, did you start developing your own insecurities when you were? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. That's a good question, actually, because I haven't really thought too much about that. But definitely, because mm. you you there and as I said, like you, you have all these people like feeling like they're they're so much better than other people, and I hate that type of mindset. Mm. But sometimes you can't even blame them, right? Because you're there and, and you have all the spotlight on you, and and you are you look like this. You're earning money with it, and it's not like a lot of times it's not little money it's a joke type of money mm. for just standing I was going to ask what, what does a runway what does that pay yeah it depends it can, because if you do runways in Norway maybe they give you what 200 bucks you know what I mean but then you do a runway in, in Milano they give you 40k you know what I mean it's it's a joke so mm. so it really depends on, on where right. you're at with the modeling you know but um, I definitely they so you made 40k on the- I wish I wish <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a it, without though it was for example a good amount, but but not even close to that. Yeah. Um, and then you know you you're around all these people that look at themselves with such a high value that you kind of start getting into your own insecurities, you know, because then you're like, oh, sh- am I doing this good? Am I you know walking? Good? Me even talking <laughs> about it sounds it sounds stupid, but um, yeah, you you start building those insecurities and. I think it's, I don't think it's something that has ever like affected me a lot, a lot, mm. but made me more unconsciously than, than what I believe. So I, I didn't even think Well, about since that. I've known you, you seem to be a very confident guy. I mean, like, I, so I don't think it's, no, yeah, you, it's which right. is maybe yeah. other, it would have for other people. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just such a, like a crazy, when I first like met you and like, started to get to know you and that was something that came up yeah. i always found that so intriguing like so yeah. like because i mean of course you see models everywhere you're always like it's Commercial. on social media There's commercials such, everywhere yeah, you see them but everywhere. you never really like no one no one so it's kind <laughs> of like, to hear like the ends of it you kind of assume that's kind of how it, how it is yeah um you can't I, i've never really thought of it to be like a like a very like um enjoyable job to be honest oh, but yeah, um sure. it, yeah. It's, it's yeah it's crazy to get that insight but for sure but yeah but that's definitely so that's definitely something that you don't care to like really like yeah no i think pursue no i think i think it's it's a bit for me personally i think it's not the smartest thing to do because you never <clears throat> know what's going to happen with with trends with your looks with this and that you never know so right. to put full into that is it's is a kind of risky game you know yeah. Um, so you want to do your masters now? I want to do my masters now, and I want to continue playing and see where that takes me. And then, of course, with the modeling stuff, I, I to, for me to say no to to earn money by taking pictures, I feel it's, <laughs> it's stupid of me. So yeah. of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and 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 take those opportunities. But it's nothing that I'm really focused. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go that way. Right. You know? What do you uh, do your masters in? So I was looking into doing business analytics. Or just an MBA, so yeah. it really depends. 
depends on if I'm if I'm able to stay here. It's definitely going to be an MBA. And if it's back home or anywhere else, I'm looking into the business analytics here. Yeah. Mm. Um, something that interests me. I think, you know, in the end of the day, AI and all this kind of stuff is, is what's up and coming and it's going to take over at one point. So mm. I think analytical jobs and stuff like this is something that is going to be very needed. Yeah. Um, but at the same time as well, it can also be very boring. So it's... <laughs> It's kind of, you know, depending on, on what happens, but it's something that I've always been very, like, go with math and stuff like this. So mm. coming into that has been, you know, I think it's something that would suit me well in that in, in the end of the day. But it's also because there's a big opportunity here to to use it with football. So then when you get the scholarship, when you get these, it, it's not as expensive. So right. And it's, it's a good thing to have on the side. I think that's promising for sure. Yeah. Um, I think it would be beneficial for us. <laughs> Get some <laughs> analytical side yeah, into yeah. the business. Hell yeah. Dude. Yeah, no, uh, for, sure. for sure. I think it's like a, a good example of like for players saying that they say they're good at soccer and but you know they prefer to have an education to take, you know, to go to I don't know, yeah. a good school to mm -hmm. have an actual uh, education and have soccer as leverage for you to get in there. And yeah. you see like you also see <clears throat> players now, professional players like PK, for instance, and stuff like this, he, he got a degree on the side while playing football. So you see more and more players tapping into that as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's having that academical side also brings a lot of things into the field as well because it builds on your confidence, on your structure, on, on hard work, on all these kind of things. So it builds your mentality yeah. as well. Yeah. And if people don't want to think about it as like a... Because I don't like the idea of a plan B, but it is always a life after your football career exactly and so you got to determine what that's going to be if that's either going to be coaching sure. if you're going to be coaching then sure maybe you don't need a degree but if it's going to be if it's not going to continue with like be soccer related yeah. then figure out what it, what is it going to be because majority of players who are going to play professionally are more likely than not going to have to are, are, are not going to be able to retire off of their football career True. that's just like pretty much like the reality for most players Facts, yeah. um <clears throat> so you need to have that it doesn't have to be a plan b but a a plan after, after football because exactly. you can only play for so long so that's like for me like without a doubt one this is like a passion of ours that we will yeah, also want to sure. do but i don't see this as a plan b i see this as something that we're growing right now as we're both and as we're all, everybody on the team yeah. is going through their own personal careers. For sure. But it's something that we can all not fall back on, but all like dedicate our time to now when our own individual careers have, I mean, it sounds like bad, but like come to an end, no, you know, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, yeah. So like my whole plan is when I'm done and I've decided I'm hanging the boots, I'm going like this is full time. This is for what sure. this is my retirement plan. For sure, you know what I mean. And people, I think more, more, and more players uh, like need to start thinking that way mm -hmm. because if because they're gonna get to a point when they're done playing or they have whatever when they're done playing is like now what what are you gonna do now? Yeah, and you want to. I think the. As much as we want to say, like, oh, soccer's my life. That's all I, I care for and stuff. Yeah. Like, there's, there's more to the sport. You, you can, after, I don't know, if you have a successful career, you're going to be in sometime in your 30s when you retire. And from 40 on, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? So That was what was really important for me as well because I think bringing it, bringing it back to football, I think also why I've been so, like, unsure about uh what i'm gonna do with it and stuff like that also comes from self-doubt from my doubts that you know i always had this with, with football am i good enough am i i get a lot into my head uh for you guys that know me as well you know that when you see me play and stuff that it really depends on on how i'm mentally how mm -hmm. i play on the field and that's also those doubts i think also made me pursue that that degree because i was always thinking yeah if this doesn't work out what am i gonna do mm -hmm. you know and that kind of pushed me towards that. So the degree, I think most likely was it was gonna come either way, but uh, that's definitely a big, big uh, thing that I that made me 
go towards it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, I think, as you say, it's very important for later in life, wh- whenever the, the career finishes, to, to have something set up for yourself, some, something that interests you. It mm-hmm. doesn't need to be a degree, something that interests you, that, mm-hmm. that gives you right. some energy, some passion, because we put our whole energy into football. Our own energy is our life, and that's why I love the the whole without a doubt, and and I loved what what you guys were doing before I even joined, um, and why I want to be a big part of it because because mm-hmm. you know you see this community that you guys are building of of the love for the game, and it's something that is is really important to me, and and something that I want to be around all the time, you know. So so for you guys, for instance, to be able to know that at some point you're gonna be able to do this fully, fully. Um, it's it's an amazing feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Like no, for sure. Like I think like us growing this and seeing like the people we have on this team and how like just like week by week, month by month, we're seeing like progress. Maybe it's yeah. not like exponential progress, but this progress for sure um, makes me so much more comfortable in this pursuit of my dream. You know, yeah. like makes me so much more comfortable knowing that like I can pursue this dream like fully because i know that when i'm done pursuing it i have something established yeah. that i can in quotes fall back on you know what i mean mm-hmm. um and so it, yeah this yeah i think for me it gives a lot of clarity as to like what i can pursue yeah so now knowing that without a doubt sir and we're trying to focus on that i don't have to worry about what am i going to do in life you know yeah. which like a lot of people think that way so now having something not to fall back on but to to work in towards, work towards for sure, yeah. it's uh it's yeah it's an amazing feeling for sure yeah and i think as well like when it comes to to football i think and that comes to, for me as well i think a lot of people think that you know if you don't make it pro or you don't make it to the to, yeah to let's say pro then everything with football is done but if you really have that love for the game that a lot of players say that they have and you really don't get that opportunity, let's say, there are so many things you can do around the, the sport, especially, for example, out here now that it's growing so much. So that is for, for people that I think they should also think about because it doesn't mean that everything is done. It doesn't mean that it's not going to excite you as much as playing as well. Mm-hmm. But of course, you've been, you put all your time into playing and that's your main goal. But if there's another plan for you, then there might be something to tap into as well. 100%. I can relate to that 100% because... Obviously, my career ended really like yeah. fast because of my injuries, yeah. and I'm pursuing coaching. And bro, like this side of things, like it's so like, exactly it. as we talked about last time. You said that you, it excites you so much when you set up the plans and all this yeah. stuff, and and you see as as I said earlier as well, seeing that progress. I think you probably can relate when you when you see progress. And and now, for example, with the teams that you're um, coaching and stuff like that, to see you know when you see progress within the team itself yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. So it's this motivation where it gives you a lot of the energy that you would get as a player as well because sure. you kind of are around it as well you know mm-hmm. so definitely the kids I'm training now let's like, say on our 2010 team right like for me like I want them to have a better career than I have yeah that you know like that's my ultimate goal for the kid that wants it mm-hmm. I'll use my nephew for example because he's my he's family yeah and I know he's motivated. I know he's he's working hard, and if that's if this playing professionally is something that he really really wants to do, mm-hmm. um, I want to be able to help him and guide him to the best of the ability so that he, if possible, can have a better career yeah. than I will have. For sure. You know, what I mean, that's ultimately like my mindset with it when when helping. So of course, I'm trying to have the best career I could possibly have, but the players that I'm bringing up, I want to try to try to provide an even better route for them than what I yeah. have, you know? And ultimately it's not up to me. It's not up to oh, me if that's going to, it's up to them and their uh, many different factors, but that's ultimately like the mindset I have with it. And I think it's also like, I think very similar with you is like, you want to have that same, you don't want players to go the route you took yeah. where you're having to deal with injuries and, but um, that's why without a doubt came in exactly so it's like that's ultimately why we're doing this and why we continue to do this and it all just stems back from like the passion and love for the sport like for what sure. you're saying um but yeah bro i think for me i think because of like 
I mean, everything that you've just said, but um, seeing like just how passionate you are about this sport um, and just how like one, and then of course with, with, with what you're studying and not even just with the sport, but how passionate you are about this project, about like, about without a doubt itself. I thought that's why I was like clear um, to have you on, bro. And I know when Matias told me about it, I was like, I was like, yeah, dude, I don't know. You should have came to me first. I know, I know. Uh, As I said, I had a lot of respect for what you guys were doing. So also I didn't want to, you know, push into that, but I definitely should. So as you said to me, and that's what we spoke about. uh, Ultimately it worked out and and I'm I'm happy it did, bro. Like I'm I'm, I'm happy to have you on. Um, I know it was easy because I told, when I spoke with you, I spoke to my brother. I was like, I have to speak to him. He has to, you know. Yes, yeah, final you guys, you invite him early, Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys. And now that's a big reason for why, I, like, what you explained right before this as well. What I loved, without a doubt, and what you guys were doing is because you know when, when whatever sport or business or whatever it is, when something is really growing, a lot of people are kind of using that situation to earn a lot of money, for instance, mm-hmm. or to use it. And here you see it. A, I think you guys agree. You see it a lot with soccer that there's a lot of teams now. There's a lot of coaches but a lot of them are not passionate about what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And that's why for me, it was very important because seeing you guys and how you guys coach and of course knowing you guys from before, I know how, how you guys think and, and seeing that you really wanted to make the players better and it was more for the passion. It wasn't because of the money side or anything like that. Mm. That was exciting to see because I've been coaching now a lot these past two, three years and, and I've seen so many so many coaches that you know they, they have no passion or then just doing things to just do things you know and and they're not getting any better they will not get any better the kids mm-hmm. um and that is going to ruin the development of the whole mm-hmm. place you know so that's why like well, without a doubt you know having all these different coaches with different backgrounds and coaches and all this stuff and having those same mindsets and values i think it's so so good mm-hmm. so that's why i think this you know can can reach so many big things because you have that kind of mindset and with that comes a lot of great things yeah well i appreciate that bro. <laughs> i just last thing you expect uh an expansion in spain sin duda that would be crazy bro. i'm not gonna lie sin duda in spain and mexico bro that's, that's so sick. Expansion. sin duda sounded good you know? well how do you say without a doubt in norwegian well i'm asking the like acting like you're not Norwegian. I you told uh you didn't see. Oh do you <laughs> in Norway. <laughs> you didn't see. Say one more time. Wait, how how? You didn't see. Und und you didn't see. Und hat wie? Hey, amazing. Und hat wie? Right about that. What is? How do you say it in? So shit. How do you say it in, in um Trondheimian? <laughs> Trondheimian. <laughs> It's the same, it's the same. Yeah. It's crazy. You're from Oslo, no? Or yeah, Oslo. Oslo. So that's the capital in, yeah. in Norway. And then Matthias from Matthias is from Norway. You don't want to go where Matthias is. <laughs> before that's we, my way, bro. I wait, trust wait, wait, you. Wait, wait. Yeah. No, wait, you wait. don't want to go. <laughs> before, before we end the pod, how'd you meet Matthias? I don't, I don't know the story. So, yeah, no, Matthias is. Uh, is uh we have a common or like I don't know you guys know Marius but um yeah. is a Norwegian guy that came with me to Westcliff at the same time mm. and then we got <laughs> very close and and we lived together and all this stuff and then he knew Matthias from back home so they were from the same place and randomly Matthias started at UCI and apparently Marius didn't know anything about that mm. and then suddenly I think I think they they got to know suddenly between like exchanging messages or whatever it was and then i met uh, matthias through him and then after that we we clicked so well so after that's been a an adventure it's been a blessing it's been a blessing <laughs> it's been a big blessing no matthias has been a big blessing that's for sure that's yeah without him you wouldn't be here bro so and i wouldn't have <laughs> met you guys i wouldn't have met you guys for instance and i wouldn't be here for sure nah um no that is actually crazy though that um matthias and Marius's stories are crazy yeah that they ended up in the same same city. i know that's so crazy they're from same city Marius is from same city. yeah they're from the same city and then ended up in the same city was it a year after he came after you came he Half came a year, I think. Yeah, I came one year after. oh he came after a year after 
Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So that's yeah. There's a, there's a lot of internationals here now, yeah. uh, especially with with having uh, you know the the agencies that grow right now with back home in Europe and stuff like that. So I think this is gonna keep growing. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of plays. Okay, so we can end it with unless you have a question. End it with anything you got to say, whether it's advice to internationals coming to the United States, advice to. Yeah. I think. I mean, um, anything you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think. For internationals, especially, that's what I've lived mostly. So what I could say about that is know that the U.S. has a lot of opportunities for a lot of players. Um, and I know back home, I know it's growing a lot, the thing of going to the U.S. and playing. But as I told you guys, they don't have enough knowledge about how it works and stuff like this. And I think it's important that if you really enjoy football, and there's a lot of players in, in, in Europe and all around the world, to be honest, that they don't get the opportunity to to get that extra step, for instance, getting a pro contract or, or continuing in the academy or whatever it is because they're very cutthroat, you know? So uh, know that there's a big opportunity out here and uh, and not only with the opportunity of going pro, but also getting your, your academics almost for free a lot of the times, you know? Mm. So so use that uh, for yourself and, and get out as well. Try to experience something new. How can uh, players get more information? Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> Underscore. Or DM me. Yeah. I'm where, where can they find you on Instagram? Uh, Luke Rossell. It's straight up like that. Luke Rossell. Rossell. Uh, without a doubt. Or without a doubt, Underscore Athletics. For um, sure. We'll make a Norwegian pitch. Until three. Athletics. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, Athletics. I wish there was a camera on, but it's right now, bro. Um, no. Yeah, and then, dude, honestly, people need to start. No, yeah, for sure. Did, without a doubt, it's a hub to get information. Bro. Seriously, no. Tap, we have tap everything in, here. And, and if anything, any questions, please, please reach out. Because yeah. there's so many, so many things that we know now that we didn't know before. And it's so easy to just communicate. And, and it gives you such a better better image of what's going out here. So, yeah. so please do, don't hesitate on that. Oh, yeah, one thing, actually, but... Now, when anybody wants to represent without a doubt, and if you score, your celebration is to be this. Mm, <laughs> One, two, three. Is that how you say it? No, I'm not. saying your word. You say, the the Norwegian. It sounds like one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, what was say? I saying? What was I saying? Without a doubt. Yeah. In Norwegian. Yeah. Mm, three. Mm, three. Three. But it sounds like one, two, three. <laughs> but I'm saying it. I think the Spanish version is better. Sin duda. Sin duda. Sin duda, hermanitos. Vale. Thank All you right. for having me, guys. Thank you, bro. At MiguelEspinoza.x. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At RafaelEspinoza.x. And then you got Lucas. Lucas. Um, expect to see this face a lot more because he's going to be our yes, model now. Yes, sir. Wow, that's <laughs> crazy. Big statement. Thank you. All right, bro. For sure. Thank you. Welcome to the TV. Bro.